Sorry, repeat that again. Dennis Crawford has just left for some oh. reason. <laughs> he was having problems, I think. I think he might be trying to get back <clears> in again. Okay. Um, well, I will, I will keep my eye open for that, and hopefully he will be able to join us again. Um, Chris, are you ready to share your screen and actually um, show the relevant documents? Uh, Chris Crimmon, I think you're muted at the moment. Ah, is now. Can everyone see the um, the document now? Is everyone looking at a uh, the shared screen from Chris, which is the um, town council meeting agenda? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've got yes. <clears throat> Yeah. Is anyone not able to see that? No. Please speak now. Good. Excellent. OK, well, in which case, um, thank you for coming, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the planning committee meeting. Um, and we first have our first item of business is going to be the election of the chair and vice chair uh, for the coming year. Can I uh, just ask everyone to um, Preferably keep your microphones muted when you know you're not going to be speaking, but then obviously you just do need to remember uh, to put your microphone on to request to speak. <clears throat> We're going to try and do this by um, everyone, if, if possible, saying their name and then the chair, uh, with the assistance of Chris and myself, will then uh, come to you in turn. I will try and also keep an eye out for hands up on, on the chat. But as I said, if possible, if you could just sort of say your name and then, then mute yourself again. And as I said, the chair, with the with the help of uh, Chris and myself, to um, remind them uh, who who's uh, waiting to speak, uh, we'll try and get to you all in turn. Uh, is is there anything else that anyone wishes to say before we actually start the business of the meeting? I will because I've just got back because it, for some reason it says I have poor connection, so it keeps dropping out. So my apologies if I do so again. Okay, well we hope we are able to stay with us. Um, but if everyone is actually ready, we'll proceed with the first business. So I'd like to ask for proposals for chair of the planning committee for the coming year. If, as I said, if you would like to say your name, if you wish to speak. And um, for the purposes of this item, what I will do is then uh, call you in turn. So proposals for the chair, please. Could I nominate Brenda Cannon? Can I nominate Stuart Wright, please? Thank you. Uh, Stuart Wright, can I nominate Mike Brindle, please? Can I just have a second for Stuart, please? Yeah, Carla Barrett, all second for Stuart. Thank, Thank you. you, Carla. And a second for Stuart for um, Mark Brindle. I will. Chris Harvey. Sorry. Thank you, Chris. All right. Are there any other proposals? Are there any other persons who wish to be nominated or are going to be nominated for chair? OK, I'm going to assume that that's a two horse race then. So we will proceed uh, to a vote on that. And um, if I can then hand over to Chris, who will read the register. And uh, if you would then say the name of either of the two nominees, please, uh, or abstain um, in each case. So over to you for that item, Chris, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Barreto. Which candidate, please? Um, uh, Stuart Wright, please. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brain. Stuart Wright, please. Thank you. Councillor Brindle. Uh, Mike Brindle. Thank you. Councillor Madet. Not here, sorry. Councillor Canham. Uh, Stuart Wright. Thank you. Councillor Crawford. Mike Brindle. Thank you. Councillor Harvey. Mike Brindle. Thank you. Councillor Hodgkinson. Mike Brindle. Thank you. Councillor Hollis. <laughs> and Stuart. Yeah. Uh, Councillor James has given her apologies. Councillor Jeremy. Councillor Brindle, please. Yeah. Councillor Robinson. 
Mark Robinson, uh, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Wright. Mike Brindle. Thank you. I'm going to count these up. I might be one second. One, two, three, four. Six, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Councillor Brindle had six votes against four. So I hereby announce Councillor Brindle is the chair for 2021. Okay, Chris, please. Can I, can I speak? This yes. is Mike, uh, I? Mike Brindle speaking. Um, just to say thank you very much for that. And uh, we need to move now to the election of the vice chairman uh, for. Can I just before you? Uh, sorry, Mike. Can yeah, I just interrupt? You there we have hands up from Mark Robinson. Oh, okay. And who was that for? Mark. Well, Chris, it's, 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 Mike, Mark, are you now. able to speak? Chris. Yeah. Well, well, it'd, be, it'd be nice to do it without the. In, yeah. Chris, just need to hang on to my, for people to actually unmute this so, so they can respond. As it is, my vote, I would have. I would have oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I do beg your pardon. Which, which, which yeah. candidate would you have voted for, please? Chris. I would have held back to the mayor's vote because I thought that was going to split. So we, we've arrived at the, the point where everyone wants to vote. Okay. They just need to you know, allow councillors to get onto. Uh, I, am to I am Thank sorry. You. I am sorry. Okay, well, that's good. Thank okay. you. Okay, sorry about that, Mike. Um, uh, did that. you wish to say anything further before you? Okay. Uh, I, I can then hand over to you to uh, manage the election of the vice chair. Okay, thanks for, for that. So. I'm now calling for nominations, please, for Vice Chair for 2021 for planning. Are there any nominations, please? This is Dave Hodgkinson. I'd like to nominate Stuart Wright, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, is there a second, I'll please? second that. Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, are, there, are there any other nominations? So Stuart Wright has been uh, proposed and nominated. Are there any, and uh, I'm sorry, proposed and seconded. Are there any other nominations, please? Can I? Hello. Hello. Was that was that Councillor Hollis trying to speak? Yes, it was. It was. It, it, it is. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Hang on. Jenny, um, do you I've, want to nominate? No, I don't, I don't, no, I, 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 I go with Stuart, obviously, because I think the team last year has been good anyway. So regardless of which way it turns out, um, I, I just go with Stuart anyway. So that's okay. what I was going to say. Many thanks. <laughs> uh, so I'm not hearing any other nominations. Last call for more nominations for vice chairman. Uh, I'm not sure, um, uh, Chris, whether you need a vote on this. As Strictly speaking, with only no. one candidate, yeah. then you shouldn't. But are you no, are you happy to take it? it? Sorry, I'd Chris. like to know who seconded it. I didn't catch the yes. name. It, it was seconded. Um, <laughs> Chris Harvey. I thought Chris it was Chris. Thanks, Chris. Chris. I'll be down, but uh, yeah. I just want to be sure. Thank you, Chris. Okay. So I'm in in that case. I'm going to declare that Councillor Stuart Wright is the vice chairman for this year. Uh, and in that case, can we move on to the second, the next item, please, which is 26, if you can find it on the screen. Well, indeed, I think. Uh, Chris, you've gone way, you've gone way past yeah, it. I, I thought I had, yes. Back to the beginning. It should be near the top somewhere. Should be the terms of reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is here. Sorry about yeah. that. I I was, can I just ask if anyone cannot see the terms of reference? We have a hand up from Councillor Jeremy. Thank you. Um, sorry, I might have jumped a kind of bit. I was actually wanting to comment on this agenda item, if I can, if that's okay. Yes, please. Please do comment. Lovely. The, the only point I was going to make, because I was having a read of the terms of reference, um, we don't get many of them, but we do um, comment on applications from Norfolk County Council. Um, because they're their own planning authority in their own right, applications on school land and um, sort of mineral sites and that sort of thing do come to us as a planning committee. Um, it just occurred to me that it wasn't mentioned in the terms of reference. So mm -hmm. it's very Brecklin heavy, understandably, they're the planning authority. But um, I just feel it should be some reference to Norfolk County Council because occasionally we do get uh, bits from them. 
That, that's a good point. Can we could we put that in the very first line to consider planning applications received from Breckland District Council and Norfolk County Council for consultation? Is that appropriate? Would, would everyone? Would is there anyone who wouldn't be happy with adding that to the first line? Mike, I've got my hand up. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. I'm not seeing hands, so I've got to rely on yeah, somebody. Would you like to jump in then? Thank you, Mike. I just um, I've been looking at the terms of reference, and um, I'm just sort of going to lead on from where Terry left off. Actually, um, I just think there's some of the wording we could change to make it a more live document. So, line one, um, Terry's quite correct. We often um, look at applications from county, so maybe the wording needs to be changed to local planning authority or the planning authority. Line two, which is where I'm going to suggest a quite significant change. We act on behalf of the council in respect of planning issues, and in particular to A, support or object to planning applications on the council's behalf as appropriate. Submit comments and recommendations regarding planning applications to the planning authority on the council's behalf. B, at the discretion of the committee, to raise any planning matters with full council where appropriate. Steve, to respond on the council's behalf to consultations regarding planning issues or issues including the infrastructure of the town which may have an impact on planning. And finally, what I'd like also to see included is working parties or task groups may be set up for specific time limited tasks as required. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Uh, other, is it, does anyone like to comment on what Mark's just said? Either agreeing or disagreeing or adding or subtracting? Mark, do you want to turn that into a proposal? Can, can I just say something? It's Dave Hodgkinson. Yes, Dave. Yeah, I, I think maybe as we haven't had prior notice of those changes, to a document that's been presented to us in the pack, that uh, maybe we should defer it to our next meeting when we've had a chance to uh, look at it. And and can I ask if, uh, before anyone responds to that, uh, can I have a clarification about how we're supposed to put our hands up? Because I notice some people are putting it in the chat, and some people are using the little hands up symbol in their video. Uh, but the, the little hands up symbol will only show if your video is on the screen, I think. So uh, it just seems yeah. to be doing it in two different ways. I think we need to have a uh, clarification yeah. about which way we should be doing it. I would say okay. you should only go in conversations at the moment. You're quite right. This is a new thing that's been added uh, in the latest yeah. update. And uh, we haven't found out um, how it is recorded apart from underneath the person or over the person's name but if they're not on the screen you're quite right you can't see it can you yeah yeah can, can i can i agree with that actually because at the moment um it looks like councillor Robinson's still got his hand up so i'm not quite sure whether um you, you you may need to press it again to unraise your hand um is everyone happy with um actually writing it in the conversation in the chat version uh, which I can then see easily. Is, is there any objections? No. no. And I will, in, I, I will investigate before the next meeting, which is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miss. <laughs> right. OK, thank you, folks. OK, we're, we're, we're in danger of losing the plot, and that's inevitable. So if everyone's happy with that way of, of indicating that you wish to speak, um, if we can go back for a moment to what Mark said and then what Dave Hodgson qualified it by, um, we perhaps need to take that forward. Dave's really saying, I think that that was a quite a complex and significant change proposed by Mark. And he was saying, let's have more time to discuss it or more time to think about it. What we would need, I guess, Mark, is that we have that in writing so that it can appear on the agenda for the next meeting, if that's what Dave wants and if Dave gets his way. Pardon me putting it that way. So, Mark, is that something that's on, on paper at the moment or can be put on print or can be emailed? Um, I, I think Dave's quite right to actually want to do that because I have suggested it's quite significant what I see as a tightening up of the references. So, um, Dave's quite right. 
actually to want to, to get sight like that first, and I'll, and I'll ping that out um, at the end of the meeting. That would be very helpful. Yeah. Um, having said that, I think that um, possibly what we should say now is I'm open to to check, having my mind changed, but I'm inclined now to say that we uh, ask for any more changes to be uh, read, read now or t spoken through now, but they would then appear on the agenda for next time. So it's not going to be decided this time, but do, do, do colleagues think, do members think there's anything else they want to change, especially under the first section, role of the planning committee? I think you've got a couple more hands up, Mike. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not seeing the hands, you see. All I'm right. not no. seeing, uh, I've got, um, oh, I've got um, uh, Roy Brame. Jenny moment, and Roy. Actually. Jenny was first, I think, yeah. Jen, ah, is that yeah, on live? <laughs> yeah, apologies. I've, 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 no, that's right. I put my hand up twice, but never mind. Um, I, I was going to say basically what Dave said. Could, if, could we have the changes that Mike and uh, Terry have said? Could we just have them in a draft email um, before the next meeting so that we can have a look and then put any extras in? Do you know what I mean? So that the wording has been put added, what Terry was saying and Mark was saying, so that we can scrutinise it, scrutinize it, if you like, yes, and uh, yes. if, to see if we if we do agree or not, but have it before the next meeting. That's quite right, Jenny. We, we should have it in advance of the meeting. Thank and you. That, that can be done if if Terry and uh, Mark can submit their, 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 their wording. That would be really helpful. Thank um, you. Uh, Roy, are you wanting to speak? That could be done by email, Chair. That would be wonderful. A copy to me and a copy to Mark um, yep. as officer. Okay. Thank you. Roy, your turn now. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I have a procedural question which I'm not sure about. If the committee hasn't got a terms of reference that's been agreed, can it carry on with the rest of the meeting? Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm not sure that it can. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think we carry on on the old terms of reference, then, don't we? I, I would think <clears throat> that. Excuse me. I would think that what you possibly have to do is to agree the old terms of reference or say that and make that public. Um, I have no objection to what was suggested. Um, the only thing I would. My second point is um, as we're going to. I had the problem with this um, terms of reference because I'm a current member of Breckland Planning. I'm also a current member of Norfolk Planning. So um, rather than be predetermined in any way or shape, um, I would like to give my apologies for that reason for the rest of the um, for the rest of the year. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's that's entirely proper, and it's obviously accepted. And you've heard that Chris has noted it, so that's hopefully done. Um, going back to your first point, um, I would suggest that we regard the present um, document as as what we're working to until such time as we agree to change it, and that's accepted by the council. And I, I would agree with that. Okay. Agreed. Uh, so um, thanks very much. Uh, any any disagreement? You can always vote on it if necessary, of course. Thank you. Um, Jen, have you Agreed. got your hand up again? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm, 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 seeing, I'm, seeing to... another, I'm seeing another HU with your name against it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I was going to say is on, on what Roy's just said, um, yeah. I know that I was on planning at Breckland um, two years as a substitute for John and two years actually on the meeting, uh, on the committee, um, I used to always declare at the beginning of um, of the planning meeting that I was on that committee uh, so that I didn't make any prejudgments, if you like. I didn't comment and I didn't vote on any planning matters in case it went before that committee. Can that be put in there somewhat? Should councillors um, still declare that for being like open and everything? Is that something we, we, we have to do or is it something that 
I just took Roy's just done it for County and Breckland being on their planning um, committee. Yeah, it, Should we do? That? It, it, it's a Sub clash of interest, really. I think I think this I think this council would would say uh, it's really up to you as a councillor to make sure that you uh, don't can say or, or or give any implication that would queer your pitch, so to speak, in Breckland or in Norfolk. Um, I mean, cynically, that's not our problem. Um, what we want to make sure is that, is that Roy is happy with his condition, with his position, and we've accepted that he may wish not to attend future meetings and other councils may be in the same situation. I'm not sure that we want to put anything... Um, I'm open to be corrected, but I'm not sure if we want to put anything in, in our uh, system of operating that, that ties people's hands. Some councillors may do it one way, some may do it another. You've chosen to do a different way to what Roy did. That seems quite acceptable to me. Mm. I oh, okay. I just wonder if if we should sort of let the or let the public know before the meeting that, um, like, I'm a I sit on Breckland's planning committee, so even though I'm attending, I'm not going to make any uh, comments or vote on anything because it could be seen as being predetermined. Um, but no, you're, 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 you're quite right, Mike. It, it's not something we can put into ours. Uh, there is one possible, so I don't know whether it's relevant to, to put forward that there is an item on the agenda, uh, disclosure of pecuniary interests. If you uh, added and, and non-pecuniary interests as well in there, would that cover um, those sort of um, uh, need, need for disclosure? No, I don't think so. I don't. I think they're two different, two different items, really, aren't they? Yeah. The the problem with that, Mark, is the fact that it it's not. Yes, you can say that you're on there, but you have to. As far as I'm concerned, um, I don't want any. You know, if I get a ward issue that I've mm. got to take, I don't want because I'm on planning. I don't want anybody to be able to say, "Oh, I was at the meeting. I was predetermined. I was adjusted by the by the um, by the other members." So I've always taken the view that other than like you as chairman can do it because you're the chair and you don't actually make a decision. Um, I would say to you that if you ever get a, um, a decision that needs the chairman's casting vote, um, you need to look at that. But other than that, um, you know, you're there to, to run the meeting so you would not be judged as predetermined. Um, so I have no problem with that. And uh, I will take my leave and say good night to you. Well, I think it would help if right, right. we say to you that uh, what you've said will be recorded in the minutes so that anyone reading the minutes will know that Councillor Brain uh, is not at any meetings because of the possibility of a yeah. conflict of interest. Does that, does that clear the way a bit? Yeah, thank you very I think much. That makes it easier, won't it? It would make it easier. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, okay. Mike. Thanks very much, Roy, for your attendance briefly. Uh, I, I think it's, it's down to me. We, we, uh, have we have we have we now have we got any other comments, colleagues, to make on on this document in terms of reference? So we've covered perhaps the role of the planning committee. Any comments may need to be made on the role of the chairperson or the role of the clerk? No. <laughs> uh, it's gone so quiet, I, I thought maybe I'd lost the plot, but I, I, I'm still, I'm not muted. Yeah, no, so I can please. confirm no further hands up. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to have two screens at once, isn't it? OK, colleagues, so I think in that case, what we'll do just to just to revise, just to repeat what we're, we're saying for this item, what we're going to do is to say that uh, if there are any further comments or suggestions for change, can they be emailed, please, to the secretary so that uh, they can be sent out in advance to everyone in advance of the next meeting so that we know what it is we're considering changing. Uh, having said that, I think we move on to item 2720, which 
finally got to declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interests. Are there any hands up? Come up. Have we got any hands up? Jeremy. Uh, if we've got a hand up, would someone like to speak? To, I haven't got the hand at the moment. Councillor Jeremy, hands up. Thank yes, you. please. Thank you. Uh, just on item F, uh, plan number 0001, the telecommunications tower that they want to build on land at Charles Burrell. Um, I remain an employee, even though I'm furloughed. Uh, so probably best to declare an interest. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. I think that's correct and accepted. Yes. Are there any other declarations of disclosable pecuniary interest, please? No. Nope. Yeah, I think that's probably got us all satisfied. So on to 2820. And can I check with Mark and or Chris? Are there any apologies for absence, please? I've got apologies from um, Councillors Burnett and James. Thank you very much. Yeah, Councillor Burnett was having difficulties getting on and Councillor James is not well today, so their apologies are noted with regret. Uh, OK, on to the minutes of the last meeting, which was the um, 10th of March, according to the agenda. So item 29. Um, what, what I suggest we do with this is we'll display part of the part of the minutes on each screen and if you can look at the first screen which takes it down to 867 <coughs> excuse me then are there any changes please hold on a minute please we're not seeing the top bits now can you go back a little bit please that's lovely that's great so we're now seeing down to 867 any comments on that please are you happy with that mm -hmm. if not we'll move on to sorry no we're going too quick uh, we, we, we need to have one screen at a time. Is that Chris moving on? Oh, that's the next sure. screen, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, no, it's 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 only what we're seeing. Well, I'm speaking personally. I'm only getting quite a small amount on the screen. So at the moment, uh, if you can if you can put eight six seven at the top, Chris. Yep. Okay. Lovely. Yep. So that that covers A and B and more or less C. So mm -hmm. any any comments, colleagues, on that? Are you happy with that, Ben? I'm sorry to labour this, but we, it's a limit of the size of the screen. Have okay. these, these not been through full council? They have. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they've been through full council. If they've, if they've been through full council, can we perhaps speed it up a bit? OK, let's move on to the next screen then, please, Chris. Yeah. Everyone happy with that one? which takes us down to, to uh, 0183 and now to 1497. Yep, fine. Um, do we need to, can we just pause on 1497, which is G? So this is the um, King's Head. And at some stage, Mark, you're going to have to make a comment on this, or I am, just to indicate, if I'll do it in, as a pause, that uh, this has now been accepted by Breckland Council. So the King's Head, uh, redevelopment will go ahead, or at least they, they've been allowed to to, to 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 take it forward. There was a for sale sign up where last time I I saw a picture of it just recently. Well, it may be that uh, if if it's a recent picture, it's possible, of course, that they want to get planning permission and then sell it off. On that's a common practice. Yeah, that may be it then. Okay. So now just checking the rest of the uh, minutes, we're on 868, so late planning applications and 869 decisions of variance. Hopefully no comments needed there. OK, yes, and uh, consultation and so on. Um, items, I'd just like to refer to the last one, 870 items to be referred to the Greater Set of Partnership. This is on our agenda, so that item will come up again this time. Right. OK, is everyone happy? I, I know you've, it's difficult for everyone to see it as we scroll through. Uh, is everyone willing to agree the minutes, please? So I'd like them to I'd like them to be taken as a true record so that I can subsequently uh, do a virtual signature. Approve the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. That's great. Well done. Uh, so we're now on to 3020, which is the plan decision made by Set for Town Council since the 10th of March to review and record. Um, is there anything to report here, please, Mark Webster? 
Um, no, this is really just for everyone's information. This is a summary of uh, the decisions that have been made um, since the last face-to-face uh, -face meeting. Um, I don't propose to sort of go through them one by one because you've all had a chance to consider them and, and I think have agreed all of the uh, decisions which are listed on the right. Uh, so really just for your information, if there are, unless there are any sort of further comments on that, um, we can just note them and move on, I think. Yeah. Is everyone happy to note them and move on? Not Sorry, yeah, there's, um, yeah, it's just one, it's one that's probably worth mentioning because it's going to come up later. If you continue to scroll down slightly further, please, Chris, if it's, until we get to the end, 464, um, it actually is listed on the items of, of the discussion at uh, this meeting, but we didn't actually get any response to our request for a um, extension to the consultation period. So as a result of that, uh, the decision or, or the council's town council's decision has been submitted to Breckland uh, support subject to neighbours, as it says there. So again, uh, I think everyone is aware of that and had a chance yeah. to comment on it as it went through, but just to, to highlight the fact that fact. Good, thank you. We did have a number of comments from colleagues, so I think most people who wanted to have a say have probably had a say, and particularly the board councillor, which was very helpful as always. Okay, so uh, we, we think I think we've dealt with 30, so on to 31 and the first of the planning applications to consider today, which should be <laughs> 0386, which is the one on your screen now. Uh, Mark, are you able to talk us through yeah, that one? Yeah, so um, I, I, this is uh, for the landing stage um, used by Bush Adventures uh, for launching new <laughs> such like uh, stand up puddle boards. Uh, this goes with an application that the, the, the members previously uh, did give their full support to for a boathouse um, around Riversdale. Uh, but this is just shows more detail of the actual landing stage on the riverside itself. Mm hmm. Colleagues, I'd like to assume that you agree with this, but you have to have a moment to op opportunity to say that you want to change it or comment on it or even disagree with it. So, are there any are there any comments, please, on this one? Um, uh, 0386. Just going to raise a question. Um, do we know what colour scheme or the railings are now going to be? <laughs> yeah, you, sorry about that. I haven't actually got that. You, you, you've got some available. I on. have to have a little check on that. Um, uh, I can I can have a look in the background while you continue, if you wish, and see if it actually is listed. Okay. Uh, is that is that acceptable? Yes. Just yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Uh, can we can we look we look then at the next one, which is O four five five. You can now see on your screen at Grenville Way. Uh, yep, so we've uh, got, uh, this is uh, a domestic extension, as you can see. There's actually uh, sort of three parts to this. Um, if everyone has had a chance to have a look at the, the elevations there, if I could ask Chris to move on to the next uh, screen. Yep, thank you very much. So you can see in, in more detail there on the block plan to the right where the three additional parts are, and that's listed and shown in more detail on the ground plan on the left there. So uh, the most sizable bit of the extension is, is to uh, the back there. Um, if I could, if we could move on to the next screen, please, Chris. There has been one comment from the neighbour, um, which, as you can see, is 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 very much on the negative side, uh, on the grounds of, of loss of light, etc. And the, the photograph there shows the sort of side, the, the, the gap between the two uh, relevant properties. Um, so yeah, o over to you, councillors. Mark, can I, I ask about that photo? Yes. Which, which of the houses uh, is the one having the work done and which is the neighbour? Yeah, so it's, this is taken from by the neighbours of their side mm. and it's looking okay. to the right. Uh, mm. So if we, if, we match, right. if we perhaps go up to the previous screen. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sort of taken down the side between the two uh, properties as far as I understand it. And you're okay, looking so the at the neighbours are on the, the left and the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah i think i think that's that's correct you're looking at sort of towards where the the larger part of the extension will be yeah. would be yeah thank you um so stuart wright's hand up was that um what you yeah. just mentioned uh, right okay no, just, come on on this one really um i've noticed that the neighbor objected to the building line in the porch at the front um, just looking at the neighbouring properties on a satellite photo, it's very difficult to judge where the building line on the front should be because the building to the right is proud of this building. The building to the left is behind that. Um, so I, a bit of a dilemma there because you would try to keep the building line on, on an estate, but the building further to the left is more in line with the one on the right. So um, I don't think we can really go too much on that. He's mentioned about the size of the plot looking at the night this is a smaller plot than the one to the left um but again i don't think it's wholly out of kilter with the the size of the building at the moment and also the um mentioned in the objection was about the architect not putting a hip roof on there well if that is the case then they won't get planning because um you know the architect has to put what he's expecting to build so i would say Suggest that um, we can't really do a lot. The, the right to light is always difficult. Um, there's no particular right to light nowadays. Um, so I, I don't think we've got much to object to on it. Uh, thank you for that. Can I just make point out what the obvious that it's, it's good to have the views of particularly of ward councillors and uh, very helpful if you can comment on, on items in your own ward. Um, the the neighbours' complaints are have been submitted so they're they're known to the reference council uh is it sensible for us at the very least simply to say that uh we if we're going to say we agree rather regretfully perhaps that we agree subject to neighbors is that a, a sensible phrase to add on this case would everyone be happy with that agreed thank you for the one agreed. response, response. Thank you. Yeah. Agreed. agreed as well oh, that's thank, thank you oh that's Chiming in, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think we can move on then. Mark, I'm just going to, back to uh, that number. Sorry, oh four. Mike, Mike. Yeah, yes, we're with you. I've had my hand up on both the last two items and I haven't been able to engage. And actually, um, you know, if, if I can, just, I'm just going to see my points through. So can I, three, yeah, Mark, Mark, there's a problem because when I'm not able to see the hands up, but if if we've got, yeah, but I've always said. And if we've got a picture physically. on screen, we can, I can't also see that. So we've got a little technical problem there. Mike, Apologies for that. Would you like to have a right, go now? Mike, I'm using both methods. And actually, Stuart, <laughs> before he spoke, actually mentioned I had my hands up. So um, I, would have I would have spoken on the, the previous item. And I don't think we should skate part, uh, past Stuart's comment on the colour scheme. Yeah, I, I previous I, item. Well, First of all, I can update you on that if you're ready. Well, I'm just going to carry on while I've actually managed to contribute to the meeting. I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> on this particular application, I do have concerns because of the way the road falls. And it will have an impact if the line's built out the front of the property. I've had, I've had the opportunity to visit the site. Um, and I, I quite, I'm, I'm supportive of development at the back. To the side and front, I'm not so supportive, and I'm more aligned to supporting the neighbours' objections. And development at the front will give that, that particular property a prominent position, which is out of kilter with the rest of the street scene. So, so we've dived in and all gone approved, and you, you quite rightly asked for ward reps' opinions. Uh, I'm now contributing after a vote. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to take that if if colleagues are in agreement. I, I think the, um, the the building line brings it in line with the next house, the the, the, the one uh, on the diagram to the to the right. I can't remember that's east or west. Um, it's not further not further forward, is it? It's it's um, uh, in in line with the with the house on the right it's it's we, we we have the right to say that we think that, that it's it's over development or it's we, we don't the part of the 
problem is we can't say the neighbour's losing light, can we? It just doesn't, it doesn't wash. Um, is there some way, Mark, that you feel, Mark Robinson, that you feel we can phrase this so that it, it's an actual planning concern? You've asked me for the policy, Mike, then I'll, I'll, I'll dig that out for you. But um, I have concerns. You're quite right. It probably aligns rather nicely with the properties going up the street, which would be number 50, uh, number 44. But the actual, um, the property that, it, that it's affecting the most is number 48. And it may align with the properties as you proceed north up the street from the south it won't. So it will have an impact on the street scene. So I, I, for, for what it's worth, I, I'm supportive of the development in the, in, in the rear because there's a suitable plot of land for that to go ahead. To the front uh, and to the side, I'm, I, I'm not supportive of that. Mark, Mark, would you like, would, would you like us to object to it? I, well, most most of my I'm, I'm offering you my objection to it, but most of my colleagues have already voted to approve, agree with well, it. So uh, I'm I'm not going to try and sway everybody back round. I just would like to have the opportunity to engage with this prior to the vote. Mm -hmm. I think I think we should have recognised that the, we're still learning out on the technology, and you should have been able to speak earlier when you might have swayed their views with your comments. So I'm quite happy to allow colleagues to say that they are changing their mind in, in favour of what you said or that they are happy to, to recommend um, that we approve it. Uh, uh, it's really up to the members to think again, uh, to, to vote again or speak again should they wish to do that. I, I don't want to say they, they can't listen effectively. Uh, I, I, I think your comments should be taken into account is what I'm trying to say. So. Can I ask again, colleagues? Just, I mean, let's 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 try and be blunt on this and, and ask. The hands up support. here from. Yeah, I Captain think, I think we just ask for it. Do you support it or do you oppose it? And maybe can we do a hands up on this, um, Chris Crimmen? I can only see. I see one. Uh, there's uh, Councillor Hollis wants to say something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm not able to see that the HUs at the moment, so it's difficult. No. no. Uh, no, I understand that, Mike, because um, they're not actually coming up on mine when I type, type them at, at the minute. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be if it's all right with the committee, I'd, I'd be quite happy to go with a vote on it for those who are for and against and see what, what's mm -hmm. what. Yeah. To be honest. OK, um, can we can we organise a vote then? Uh, are you able to do that? Uh, I can. That would be Chris, won't it? Will, you probably have to just call out names, will you? I will, yeah. And uh, what, what I'll do is, uh, what, what are we voting for? That um, you accept one, which We're is basically the voting, uh, voting whether we support the, the development or whether we oppose the development. No, as a whole, OK. Uh, Dennis Crawford's got his name up, so hands up. Dennis, do you want to comment, please? Yeah, I do. Um, on the extension to the floor of the building, um, is that within the grounds of a permitted de development? Uh, because it's only a relatively narrow piece and you can add on to your building's permitted developments um, without planning permission, can't you? Yeah. Uh, so, I think you'd, you'd expect to get to, to have to seek uh, planning permission for something that alters the building line. So that bit at the front is uh, it would certainly need planning permission. I'm it? not sure on that. Really? Well, hands up from Councillor Barreto. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. I I'm just wondering if in this case, um, wouldn't it be possible to say approved with some recommendations of some reservations? Would that be possible to do? Is uh, I'm just a bit wary of um, going with the, the, being having a radical decision about the, the, the build up as a whole. 
whilst I, I, I agree that, you know, they should be allowed to build towards the back and, and improve the, um, that area. Um, I also am a, a bit concerned about um, Councillor Robinson's comments. There's some parts of it might be, you know, in the objects from the neighbours are not good. So I'm a bit wary about approving something like that. I wonder if is 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 there's a, a compromise where we could say, yes, we approve, providing there are limitations to, you know, to how we build at certain parts of the build. Would that be possible, please? It would be possible. Mm. Any, any more comments? I'm, ben, sorry, I have to apologise. I'm not able to see your hands on the screen. I can't see any at the moment. Mike, can I just speak? Please do. Um, yeah, I, I'm, the building line question does concern me. As I say, it's, it's staggered there as it is, and I personally would prefer not to have that porch bit built on at the front. But... Uh, so I think you know, if you had a consensus of subject and porch not going on, I think that's probably the way forward. Is is that a compromise that that, that finds favour with colleagues that we accept the large bit at the back, we accept the small bit at the side, and we but we but we are not in favour of the additional porch bit at the front. Is that wouldn't acceptable? We to, wouldn't we have to say the reason why we don't accept it? Actually, it's not. It's hang on. It's not the porch. Which are you? Is that right, Stuart? It's, it's the, it's the extension of a bedroom, I think. I, but... I think it's the extension of the bedroom, isn't it? That's um, yes. the one that sticks out at the front. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, in answer to the previous question, it was quite rightly asked. I suppose the answer is that we would be saying, would we, that it uh, that it does interfere with neighbours. Is that the justification for not agreeing to the extension of the bedroom? I, I don't think that's acceptable that, that you're, you're just saying the neighbours. I think you've got to say that it sticks out and, and, and in, interferes with the street scene. Yeah, we can do just that. Just say one neighbour, because what they're saying is the overall, I forget what Mark said, either going up or down north or south, I, I forgot that bit, but he's actually saying that if you're going up one way, it looks all right, but when you go down another way, it's not. So it's cutting that bit off. We'd have to say, we accept apart from, da, 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 if that makes sense. Could we not say something like, apart from the extension to the building line to the front of the building? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I... I I agree. I think that we can just say that the, the front, the bit on the front, is a bit of a protrusion into the uh, the street area, and, and that's that's a bit yep. too bit, taking the building a bit too far within what's what's uh, yep. reasonable. May yeah, thanks, Carla. Yes. May I may I come in with a way of phrasing that? Please Yeah. I, I just say we're supportive of um, development of the, to the rear of the property, but feel development to the front would have a negative impact on the street scene. Okay. I'm happy with that. Just, just to repeat that, so we're saying that the back's accepted, the porch is accepted, the development at front will have a negative impact on the street scene. Is that a good compromise that finds favour, folks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, agreed. It, okay, that, I'm very grateful. That's a difficult one. And I think we've probably come to a good a good compromise decision. If everyone's happy with that, then I wonder whether uh, Mark, Mark Webster, can we move on to the next one, please? Thank you. I might be a minute. I've got to get that back. That back. Okay. Yeah. OK, I've got uh, no note about that, so that's that's fine. Yeah, are you... Uh, I'm almost ready to go back. Wait me a minute. You have, uh, yeah, we're on. We're I have got an update on the... Um, Tab seems to have disappeared. Uh, are you hearing me at the moment? Um, yeah, we can hear you, Mark. Okay, fine. So uh, 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 an update on the previous one about the landing stage. Uh, as I thought, there wasn't actually mention of a colour scheme as such. It Ooh. says metal railings uh, for materials and finishing. It simply says metal railings, which presumably implies that they're not actually uh, painted as such, and a wooden uh, staging and floor uh, of, of the landing stage. Uh, and again, there's no mention actually of paint on there. So um, metal and wood would be the 
the uh, colour scheme, I suppose, as far as we can tell. Uh, um, comment on that then, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, uh, does anyone, would, would you like to comment on Stuart? Is that Stuart? Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, I, I just think that we've got the railings along the riverside further on, they're all painted black, and it would be nice to tone it down a bit rather than having scaffold pole grey as we tend to have be put upon us elsewhere in the town so uh, um if we could request uh, them painted black that would be quite nice i know he probably wants the visibility for his business but at the same time once people know that there's flags and boats down there they'll, they'll see where the landing stage is so i think black would be quite nice to, to blend it in and make it subtle. Mm -hmm. It is very much within the central area, isn't it? That, if you like to call it the heritage area. So, mm. uh, <laughs> we're, 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 I think I think we're, I'm, I'm very conscious that, that colleagues are being denied the chance to speak part because we're just not managing. We haven't quite learned how to manage this perfectly. It's very hard to do that. You've got one screen at a time and you want four pictures on it. So, if, if we can accept that, is everyone willing to go go along with the idea that the rating, we should be saying the rating should be black? Yeah, I support that. Um, yeah. yeah, it should be oh, keeping. Very, yes, that's that's Thank you. That's great. Many oh, I would, I would, uh, my, I would friend. say the heritage, about the heritage, though, because it's our town centre. It, it should be in keeping with the site. Yeah, well, the heritage site. That's how I'd word it. I think they might well accept that uh, suggestion. I, I think it's a reasonable suggestion. Can, can we add that in, then, um, Mark? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Many thanks. Thanks for going back. I appreciate that's difficult for the technical side, and it's we're catching up on what's gone wrong slightly, or what we've yeah, found so, to do. So yeah, apologies if I have missed any hands up. Um, just to, just to reiterate, uh, probably the best way to get notice is just to say your name, and if we, if you do say your name, we'll definitely sort of hear you and, and try and take a note and, and bring that to the attention of the of the chair. If you don't get to speak uh, straight away, if you just sort of quick say your name and then and then mute yourself again, we, we will try and come back to you. Uh, the, the the hands up icon in the middle of the screen I'm not necessarily seeing um, the uh, the meeting chat which is the um, the little the, the you, you can see what's going on there by looking at the speech bubble that looks like a, a little thing out of the Beano which is in the middle of the on that on that sort of bar in Teams um, uh, so that is sort of getting noted. Um, Again, there may be a bit of a delay, but as far as I know, everyone it's, we have seen, we are seeing that. Um, so uh, use that if you if you if you'd rather, rather be silent and not interrupt things, or or if you if you speak out, we will try and get to you. Um, it, is everyone okay to proceed then with four, five, six? Yes, yes, yes please, Mark. Yes, on to four, yep. five, six. So um, that is the uh, it's a coffee shop restaurant. Um, it's a sort of drive through type thing attached to be attached to the petrol station. Um, this uh, looks in very, very similar to me to a previous application, uh, which is sort of mentioned um, a little bit further on. So that's the sort of uh, broader plan of the site that you can see above there. And Chris, can we have the next next page. Uh, so there's a close to look at it there. That's where actually um, the site plan is. Uh, so it is um, removing an existing area of trees and and replacing it with uh, this restaurant. So if we could just move on to the next uh, screen again, and that's the sort of side view of it. Um, so uh can we go just very slightly further on chris because it yeah. may be yeah that's it so you those of you <laughs> many of you may find this very familiar as i said it, it looks to me very very similar indeed to 1592 a previous application that was considered by the by the town council um and the opinion at the time was that the, the town council would oppose this application until suitable mitigation is put forward for the loss of tree canopy that would take place um which should be off-site but within that but itself um this as i said this one looks very similar to me to that previous application which was sort of subsequently withdrawn but has now um basically resurfaced as, as a new number the option is just one of the options is just to say mm -hmm. that we repeat our previous comment any anyone like to make a comment on on this reapplication? Got uh, hands up from Terry Jeremy. 
Yep. Um, if I could just jump in there, Chair. Um, as a general point, I'm supportive. You know, I think uh, people want to invest in the town. That's a good thing and sort of expand and it's more jobs and that sort of thing. Um, the bit that concerns me is that whole stretch of road there, the dual carriageway, is absolutely full of rubbish. Um, a huge part of that is people chucking stuff from their car. They'll go through, you know, the petrol station or whatever and get stuff and, and chuck it out. Um, and I just think it's an opportunity to comment really generally that um, I noticed that there's car parking bays um, built into this. Um, and I don't know, it's just because my eyesight is not good enough, but I couldn't see a single litter bin on that colourful map which they've got there. Um, or any mention of signage encouraging people that are visiting the drive through to dispose of their rubbish appropriately. Um, so I just wonder if there's an opportunity to uh, include in there that actually we don't want them to be chucking the rubbish halfway up the dual carriageway before they leave Fetford. So um, if we can get that incorporated, I think that will be a bonus. Uh, thank you for that. Is anyone in dis anyone disagree with that comment? No. Okay. Mine. <laughs> yes. I don't I don't disagree with Terry's sentiments at all. But if you look at the application, you have to expand the screen. There are actually three litter bins on the terrace. Could you point them out to us, Mark? Because I'm really struggling to read it. Yeah, no, it's a really small screen. So you see um, where the car's parked yep. by the uh, zebra crossing. You go from the line, straight, straight right. There's a litter bin there. Yes. There are a square. And from the car to the left, follow the, follow the straight line again, and then go up the, the, the hedge, there's two there. Yeah. Uh, I take your point. I think that's a fair point. If we can emphasise the importance of litter bins, but also signage, I think that'll probably do the trick. But I'll take your word for it. Maybe I should get some glasses. There's another, <laughs> well, two, there's another two outside the boundary, I think, for some reason. So... You can see where the cars are parked with the back to you. There are two more litter bins there. See. see where the zebra crossing is there. Go to the bottom of the zebra crossing and look either side. There's two little black dots. Yeah, there's, there's five on the site altogether. It's like a really boring game of Where's Wally? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jerry. Signage is the main point, though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, that, that, thanks, Jenny, for bringing us back to that. It, it is the signage that Terry recommended that doesn't yeah. appear to be there. Uh, we could yeah. perhaps recommend that a sign or sets of signs be provided. I was saying use the litter bins or take your litter home or saying don't drop litter or whatever. There may be yeah. a standard a standard sign that's available, but yeah. perhaps we can ask can can we ask that that signage be be a requirement, signage about litter be a requirement? Is that? Yeah, we, we can ask that. Even we get it or not, mm -hmm. we can we ask can for it. Yeah. Mike. If, if everyone's. Yep. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, I'm um, just uh, a quick observation. Um, I agree with um, with Terry's uh, comments and, and getting some more signage to make sure that they keep the the area. You know, it's going to get a lot of more traffic going through, which means you know it needs to be kept tidy. Um, I'm just wondering to be mindful that uh, you know, the council is always mentioning they are now working towards zero emissions. So I wonder if it's not for us as a council to make it a, um, a pro forma and establish recommendation. It's not a requirement that every new area a new, a new business opening up or to take in consideration apply all the possible measures to minimize their, their environmental impact and then make sure the areas are tidy thanks for that carla any further thoughts from anyone uh, i mean I'm, I'm probably going to dump it on you mark of webster and say um it, it can we um is, is there some way that you can find a set of words to to cover that point uh, and and just to make sure that we're, we're standing up for the... Uh, Terry's original point was there's litter all along the road uh, in a sense it, it detracts from the people's opinions and views about Thetford. Uh, we really need to press that point home in some way if we can think of a way of doing it. 
Um, well, we could, for example, um, as, as I think you suggested, um, would request or would support subject to the inclusion of um, yeah. anti-litter signage. Um, I mean, you could specify a sort of a number of signs if you wished, or just say sufficient anti-litter signage um, being included. That's brilliant. <laughs> Could I, uh, it's Brenda Cannon. Could I just ask a question? Yes, Brenda. I don't know if yes, I... Brenda. Where exa yeah, where exactly is this? So it's on the A11. It's where the petrol station is at the moment. Well, can I just say the impact on the forest? Because what you what you do get, you get a lot of residents walking through there, going to that garage, and that's where we get um, a lot of the litter from on their way back. So it's... Uh. Where, the, where them bins are actually located is not all, uh, you know, if it's in the garage area and people are not, yep. uh, they're actually eating them on the way back through the forest. So it, it is, it is on the far road. side of the road, not not Sorry. the side nearest the Abbey Estate. Yep. Oh, it's, it's on the other side. That's on the other side, yeah. 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 So it's it's on the country yeah. wayside. And be brave <laughs> people to walk be. through there. <laughs> um, <laughs> hands up from Councillor Robinson. Um, thank you. And Dave's just sort of um, clarified my first question. So if it's on the opposite side of the road, how many people are going to be employed at this premises? Yeah, if you just bear with me, I'll have to actually just go back to the form to get an actual figure for that. Thanks, Mark. Yep, sorry. It's... Uh... So just looking through now, details, details, vehicle parking, right, employment, okay, so um, existing, uh, existing employees, well they're putting zero down for existing, so they're not counting the existing petrol station in this. Yeah. So proposed employees, full-time six, part-time nine, equivalent to full-time 11. Okay, that, that's fine. I, I, I did have an initial concern about the, um, the quantity of car parking spaces for staff, but four looks sufficient. So thanks Mark for providing that detail. Right, thank you. Are there any other comments? I think we just need to pick up Brenda's comment if we can, uh, Mark, because uh, Mark Webster, because uh, Breckland, Breckland's planning committee is not going to know how near this is to a large uh, urban area, a, 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 a housing estate, and the fact that people are walking there, as Brenda's explained. And then dropping this from the back, we, we perhaps need to find a way of, of further further stressing the need for suitable signage and suitable bins along the route, perhaps, or, or at least it's another reason for insisting on the signing. Okay, so we were talking about signage on the site, presumably. Yeah, I mean that's all we can control, I suppose, isn't it? But we we. We need to bear in mind that Breckland, we need to find a way of telling Breckland that there's a problem with, with people walking to this site. They would expect everybody to be driving, but they're walking to it and then throwing litter on the way back home. That's what it amounts is that, is that, That's what Brenda was saying, if I've got Brenda right. I, I think it was that people are walking to the other petrol station on the other side of the road, aren't they, rather than this one. This is the north side. Uh, well, it's it, one's, one's described as east, which is rather confused me. Which is which? Are we? Uh, is this one in front of? It's just the far side from where we are now. So, to speak. is this the further side from the town centre? Yeah. Opposite Abbey, opposite the one on the Abbey side. Because this is yeah. Two, so, so, so this is yeah. The, it's the far side, just to confirm that of the Abbey. So, yeah. so I wouldn't want to cross that road. <laughs> Dave, Dave's right, got so his Brent, hands up. Oh. Dave's got his hand up. Yeah, I was just going to clarify yeah. what has already been clarified, so that's fine. Yeah. So the, the opposite side is the fishing pond. Yeah. Just saying, still lit, uh, you know, because people go to the fishing pond, they go in there, won't they? You know, it is a, about maintaining our forestries as well, because you are, you, you, you know. 
Well, would that be anything to do with the developer? As I say, we can't maintain the forest, so um, yeah, we'd be on a losing battle. Um, as long as we've got the signs up, perhaps yeah, go, go outside this boundary now and again and tidy up as well. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to suggest we move on, folks. We've, we've, we've given that a fair airing. We've come up with a, a, a between between what Terry began with and Brenda finished with, we've come up with a reasonable additional proposal for improving the situation as far as we're able to on that particular site. We can't control what's happening on the other side of the site. It's not far to this plane. So, okay. so I, can I just um, clarify what the, the actual um, uh, decision is then? So I've yeah. got down now, are, are we wishing to support it with, with conditions? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, can we, yeah. can we phrase, can we phrase so the, it as strong as we can? So um, <laughs> I'd like to say we oppose it without these, but uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Support we could that. say that, absolutely. It, uh, that's, that's. I mean, your, your uh, default, I suppose, or your previous position was, um, uh, Chris, have you, have you, are you still sharing your screen, Chris? Have you still got the... Uh, the um... No, we've got you up. Ah, well, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, so if we could get the document um, back, is, is that is that um, Mark Robinson literally raising his hand? <laughs> I think so. Oh, right. Sorry, mm -hmm. Councillor Robinson. I was just going to suggest some wording that we're, we're supportive of the application subject to um, an assessment of the de developer's impact on the local environment. How they, they mitigate impact yeah, well, the, the previous the previous comment was would object until um, I was going to say if Chris, can you can you share the screen again because the the comment is actually up there, isn't it? Um, you you are muted, Chris. Yeah, if we could get um, if we could get back the uh, screen. There we are. Uh, yep, stop there. So the previous comment was would oppose this application until suitable mitigation. Oh, just up a little bit more again, Chris. I can't quite see it until suitable mitigation put forward for the loss of tree canopy that would take place uh, which would should be off-site but within Thetford so that's that's the way you worded it before um, if you wanted to to go with that and then add in and sufficient anti-litter signage is installed on site um, that, that is one possibility yeah I think that sums it up quite well I wonder whether colleagues are willing at this stage to accept that so the mitigation that we're seeking uh, before we withdraw our opposition is firstly the loss of the tree canopy to be replaced, and second, that the sufficient litter, uh, what's the word, uh, bins, if you'd like to simplify it, should be provided. Uh, Brenda Callum, can I just say something? I, yes. I, I think sometimes when you cross the country, and I think Stuart might um, know something about this. When you cross the country and you pull into a garage area and, you know, they've got a little cap or they've got a McDonald's or something like that, they say, please, please be mindful of our forestry around us. We like to keep it nice. Please use litter bins provided. You know, it doesn't have to be keep it entirely, you know, right in your face. But just, uh, uh, just highlighting, you know, whoever's on Brecton planning could actually take that forward. It's the sort of thing that yeah. we, we, we'd like to see. You know, you could have pretty pictures and then the wording. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I can go to the level of actually asking for sort of specific design or or, or, or wording on the signage. Um, but we could certainly ask for signage of uh, uh, um, to. Um, if you want to just say anti litter, it could be um, supporting a um, litter free environment. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they they probably come up with something. Stuart Wright, can I... but we have to have a word. Oh, we've got hands up from Dennis Crawford, by the way. Yes. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure who was first. Is Stuart first and then Dennis? Question mark. Dennis was first. My area has been covered. It was about the tree canopy and everything. Dennis, you're covered. on. Have we got Dennis? Uh, yeah, Dennis has said his his uh, comments already been covered. So. Okay. Um, Thanks for that. Have we got Stuart Wright? Yes, thanks, Mike. Um, I think Brenda's correct in, in really trying to big up the, the environmental side. 
to the north of, of the site it does mention that is the protected species area so i think there is a, an angle to go with there to say you are in a, um, a set very environmentally sensitive area please dispose of your um, rubbish um, in the appropriate manner okay um i think i'll just ask again once more is, is everyone happy with that final comment there does that do it have we got there at last yes yes thank yes. you <laughs> yes, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, everyone. That's that's much patience applied. So, um, Mark Webster, if we go on to 464, which you have already got on your screens, folks. Yeah. So, um, actually, this is we can move straight past this, I believe, because, um, as I said, this is the one I mentioned earlier that was originally going to be discussed at this meeting, but um, ha the comment had to be submitted by uh, yesterday, basically. Um, it might be just worth okay. noting before we move on, Chris, that the, the question of hours of opening, um, Chris, can we just go back slightly, uh, was, was brought up as part of that. Uh, and the, the hours of opening are, are sort of listed there if anyone wishes to see it. But um, I think everyone now has had the chance to look at that and comment on that and, uh, and the decision was made and submitted to Breckman. So um, unless there's any further uh, questions, I, I would propose to move on to the next item. Yeah, I think that's right. We, 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 we're, we're too late to really materially affect it. If we can go on to now uh, the Old Berry Road, this is number four, Old Berry Road, the almshouses. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I forgot. I forgot this was coming up. Yes. I, I'm, I'm a trustee, so I won't say an, a thing. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I've got I'm a, a trustee, so I'm I'm taking the same thing. Yeah, I, 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 I think that need, if 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 that can be met, noted, please, uh, Mark, Chris, that um, Dennis and Brenda are not speaking on this because they're trustees. Okay. Uh, OK, yeah. So this is a, a, a rear boundary wall, which is apparently already in a very poor state of repair and already has partly collapsed. Um, the proposal is to replace an existing flint wall uh, with a, uh, a brick wall with flint panels in it. Um, it is to the rear of the property, so it's not uh, directly sort of visible from the road. Um, and there is no objection from the historic buildings consultant. Any any comments? Do we accept that? Agree. I think we did we did give it quite a good churning over in in print early, uh, in the last two or three weeks. Um, I'm hearing yeah. one large agreed. Um, agree. Agree. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, well, that's very helpful, colleagues. Thank you very much indeed. We are agreeing with this sensible compromise. Okay. Thank so, you, Chairman. We're moving on to. Uh, yeah, this is zero, 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 one. Um, just before you move on to that one, Chairman, that's the one that I've got an interest in. So um, I'm actually going to leave and go and have my tea. So um, uh, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have any comments on the other. Well done. Uh, well, where's our tea? The other item, so uh, I shall be sure to go. Wrong excuse to leave early. OK, thanks a lot, Terry. Um, Thank you very much. Your, your <laughs> comment is noted. Thank you. Um, okay, folks, so um, just just bear with me a moment. I have a slight power issue. There we go. Sorry. Um, yeah, so this is um, an application that will look, um, again, quite familiar to you because it has what well, is one that's come up in similar form and not exactly the same as, as beforehand. So this is a proposal to replace an existing telecommunication mast, which is on the road near the Charles Barrel Centre with a, um, a larger one to the rear of the Charles Barrel Centre, sort of backing onto the playing fields. Um, when it was submitted before, there was a mast with a, a sort of set of extensions aerials uh, coming out of the top. Um, this is much more of a, a sort of slimmed down version. Uh, so at the top, it's, it's it's much more of what they would call the monopole. So it's it's a uh, much thinner at the top. Um, this is one that was actually the, the previous application was actually refused uh, by Breckland, as well as as being objected to by the town council. If we could actually, if if people have had a chance to have a look at the sort of plan there. Um, could we move on to the next page, Chris, if that's all right? Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of blurb there, but basically, uh, as I said, it was it was um, applied for and refused. Um, uh, and they noted that we, the town council at the time objected based on the, the planning policy, which, which is going to 
come up later and, and you know is due for review uh, uh, as a sort of blanket ban against new masks their point being that this isn't actually a new one as such it's replacing a, a nearby one which they could add to if they wish to but they, they're trying to to move it away from housing uh, more and as i said they have actually minimized uh, the extent it sticks out at the top of the pole uh, to a much more slim line uh, version. Uh, so, uh, yeah, over for comments. Uh, we have a hands up from Dave Hodgson, I think. Yeah, I um, just wanted to comment on the fact that they're saying it's a replacement for one that they are decommissioning. The one that they talk about being due to be decommissioned and removed has actually already gone. It's not there, no longer there. So it's uh, a little bit disingenuous of them to say it's a replacement. Well, I suppose it is in theory, but it's not replacing an existing one. It's replacing one that's already gone. Um, I, I, and I would submit also that uh, this is still a significant blot on the landscape. It's in a very visible position as you come into the town. So I, I, I think uh, we objected, well, we objected it on the basis that we uh, our planning policy uh, says that we object, but I think we object on it. I, I would say we should object on it because it's uh, a significant eyesore, large, still a large structure, 20 metres, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, very, very significant. So that, oh, those are my comments. When you're free, could I speak, please, Brenda Kenham? I know Jenny's got her hands up. Uh, yeah, so Jenny and then Brenda, is it, uh, Chair? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'll, I'll take your advice because I can't see. So Jenny and then I think Brenda. You had De I think Dennis has got hands up as well, hasn't he? Can we, can we come to Dennis later? So we've got Jenny, Brenda, uh, Dennis. I think Dennis was from the previous one, previous yeah. uh, item. Yeah, that's, sorry, my mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, um, how far away from the houses is this? I can't really tell on on the map. So um, I, I always worry that this, when they put these things up, if they're too close to housing and schools and that, I do worry about it. That's okay. how so, we've Chris, got, can we got. Uh, sorry, sorry, Chris, Mark. can we go to back to the previous page and then we can sort of. Just to look at the the plan again, you can see the site plan exactly. on the left there. Yeah. So, um, you're looking at sort of round the back of the tennis courts at the Charles Barrel Centre. If you see the site location plan yeah. on the left there, yeah, the Charles Barrel Centre is the sort of build large building on the top right. Yeah. Uh, so your nearest houses would be sort of backing on to to that on the sort of left hand side of yeah, that. Yeah, that's site the, end, the bottom end of Pine Close, backing on to the tennis courts there. So it's the right, width I'll of the just... tennis courts to, towards to the to the nearest houses. Still, is that, yeah, I, is that still, I still think it's too close. Okay, hands up from Stuart Wright. No, we, we, got, we had a list, didn't we? We had Brenda and then Dennis. Oh, sorry, yeah. correct. And then Stuart after that. Uh, uh, my, and, yeah, no, yeah, my, mine's a learning question, actually. Um, nothing to do with the plans. Um, Terry said he's got a, a conflict of interest, so he'd leave the meeting. How has he got a conflict of interest? Because this is not his power that he's putting on, is it? It's somebody outside that wants it there. I assume he's. I assume he's referring to the fact that the Charles Barrel Centre was presumably going to financially gain from the um, uh, uh, permission uh, to install uh, this. That's, that's correct. The, the Charles Barrel Centre would get a small uh, annual rent of the piece of land in effect. And so, Terry is still employed by the Charles Burroughs Centre, so you could argue that he's got a financial interest. Well, wouldn't wouldn't the whole board have a financial interest as well then? I, I, I'm only asking the questions here. There's a difference between pecuniary and non-pecuniary, that's the difference. Yeah, no, nobody else could gain financially because no one else is paid. Right, but Terry won't gain by that, would he? Well, it's, it's, he's playing safe, isn't he? Right. Uh, yeah, that's what you do with a pecuniary interest. You 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 just play safe so that everyone can see it's four, it's four square. No one, he could not possibly have been uh, his his view could not possibly have been affected by the fact that he's a paid employee of someone who, who stands to uh, the organisation that stands to gain from this place being this uh, tower being erected. Yeah. Well, well, I'm only saying that because that that's why I said I'm only a trustee on the arms as is that brick wall. What we, talk, we were talking about earlier, 
I'm not going to gain out of it, you know. The old lady but that lives in there. It, might, it, you it know. was your decision not to take part in the discussion. You didn't have yeah. to decide. Well, no, that. Because, yeah, I suppose that's because my I, it's my background training. If you no, don't, you, yeah, okay, you, yeah, you, just a learning you, you, thing. You, 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 no, you, you played safe, Brenda. That's that's a wise thing to do. If in doubt, duck out. Okay. I think you've done. I think you've done the right thing. Um, okay. Uh, we, where did we get to? I think it was Stuart, and then oh no, sorry, it's Dennis next, isn't it? Uh, I'm. I'm not taking part in it. I'm just listening. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Stuart mm -hmm. Wright. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Um, I think going along the Dave's line it, it is a blot on the landscape as you enter Thetford from Barnum Common it will be very visible and noticeable um, because it is at the extremity of the Charles Burrell Centre site um, under that green area which is very level. I'm not quite sure we've we've had these masts up and down in, in, in prominent places and one people are saying that they can put them up anyway um, but I think we're right to try and object and try and in, get a better um, improvement to the look of it even if it's um camouflage behind some trees there's a few pine belts around there's got plenty of trees to to hide them but um i do think that is a very prominent site and uh, people coming from various Edmonds will notice that as a blot on the landscape uh any further comments please on this yeah, yeah I, i've got one because the land actually is leased by effect for town council it belongs to Norfolk County Council. What have they? What has Norfolk County Council said? Because it's their land, isn't it? Have they opposed it? Uh, yes, yes. I, I could have a look. I could have a quick look if you want, um, just to see if there is a, anything from uh, from Norfolk County Council on this. If um, you want to continue, was, I'll just look in the background. Part. While you're doing that, Mark, there was a long, long discussion about this uh, between Terry and I think Norfolk. And um, Norfolk tried pretty hard not to make a commitment. Um, they said it had nothing to do with them. It was a Charles Burrell issue. That was their initial stance. They may have changed it, but that was how they started. It said nothing to do with us. It's the tenant who's got a problem. So let the tenant comment. Yeah, just looking on the application now, um, there's no other sort of consultee comments apart from environmental health um and and the rest of it is is all sort of um documents supplied by the applicant sort of directly so i can't add any further uh, anything further to elucidate norfolk county council's thoughts on the subject I, I, I wonder whether we can simply repeat the comments i know it's changed location i know it's a bit slimmer but uh, it's still 65 feet or 70 feet high it's going to be way way above everything around it it's going to be seen for well, right across Barn Common, I thought. Uh, certainly, when you come up the Berry Road, it's it's it is. We've described it beautifully twice as a blot on the landscape. Can we say that we oppose it because of its um, height and lack of um, what we call it mitigation, or lack of lack of trees, <laughs> or lack of tree cover, or lack of any cover? Yeah, hideability. <laughs> it's not a word, but I'll make it up. Screening. Screening. Screening, that's yeah. Should we ask for screening? I, I'm not sure there's, there's anything you could really get to screen something of that height, to be honest. No, you couldn't. You, it'd, be, it'd be a long term project at the rate of tree growth. <laughs> it would. It would. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's their problem. Um, I, I'm, I think we probably ought to oppose it as we've got it in our. In our uh, the documentation that we should that we do oppose this kind of development i think in the end brecon will have to give way or will give way they, they can see this is improved i think possibly any line that we take should refer to it being a worse location than the other if we think it is uh, are we saying the locations um worse than the last one or is it indifferent or is it better perhaps it's seven Any times opinions? the height of the building, the Charles Barrel building. Seven <laughs> times the height. Okay. To be honest with you, Mike, I, I, these masks always frighten the life out of me. I suppose it's because years ago they there were certain areas and everywhere, everyone in that area had a mask and there was a mask and all the children got cancer. I don't know if you remember. I know it's a few years back. 
So, <laughs> you know, I'm a bit I'm a bit against anything when, you know, the Charles Borough is a big centre. It's not as though it's just a centre that's open one or day one or two days a week. It's opened every day and there's loads of people using it. You know, I don't know. I just think it's too near a building. Yeah. Can, can we say that, Mark Webster? We think it's too near a uh, too near a, a heavily used building six days a week, and um, and the the height is is there's no mitigation on the height. There's no attempt to um, plan any further height hit. What's the word? Improving it by hiding it, so to speak. I mean, even if you hit the bottom lower fifty feet, it'd be better, wouldn't it? And just having a completely bare thing that sticks up sixty five feet in the air. Um, well, OK, are you going along the lines then that you object on the grounds of the visual impact yes, and that screening you. and its proximity to a, uh, a well-used building? Oh, look at those words. They're, they're, uh, where, where have you got it from, Mark? That's great. Yes, we are objecting. Well, on those well from you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, you plural, that is. <laughs> yeah, so. um, yeah, is, is, is that... Um, is, is that uh, what we're going to say, folks? I would agree with that. Is, yeah. any, 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 uh, can we agree with that, folks? Agreed. Agreed. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Yeah. OK. Agreed. Mike, not, Mike, can I just ask a question before you Mr. go on to the next item? Yeah, um, yeah. Is this similar to the one that we're having up near the um, Brandon Road roundabout? One that was Mark Webster. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. No. So that's that's a rather different design. That's a uh, a lattice tower rather than a, a monopole. So this one that we're looking at today is a um, a pole basically, uh, like a flagpole but but bigger. Whereas the other one is a lattice tower. So it's more of a um, I don't know whether you can see me, but it's sort of a, a crisscross design um of a, a sort of like a like a giant trellis so it's yeah. it's a, a, a rather different looking or type of tower i'm just wondering how many poles we need in fetford goodness me got these big poles going up everywhere um yeah the only colleagues, I can... I'm sorry i'm really sorry to interrupt i'm gonna to have to apologize myself and go a bit earlier today because i like i said i'm not making the call from home and i really must go now i won't be able okay, to stay on the call any longer so my apologies for not staying any until the end I, uh, good luck with the rest you know see you soon okay thanks thank you thank you thank you um yeah no just sorry just to complete what i was saying that i mean there is quite a lot of um sort of technical backup information uh, on the application you know which which obviously is written by the developer in favor of their application but sort of it gives this the, the uh, supposed justification for the for the need for masks and their location so um yeah you, you, you sort of need to have a wade through that and and sort of more more uh, uh, sort of technically or expert um views than mine would probably be needed to to really uh sort of suggest whether that's justified or not my friend can i just can i just make a comment on what brenda said because i think uh, one of one yeah. of the reasons why we have so many polls <laughs> is because there's no compulsion for the different companies to share the uh, the the um the sites and so we have uh, different suppliers building their poles to uh, it's a competitive market so they uh, they they're allowed to build their own poles to promote their own signal in in the different areas if there was a government directive that said there should be two three poles maybe in Thetford and all the companies share them to get coverage over the whole area i think that would be an improvement to the situation yeah so where do we take that to? Norfolk County Council. <laughs> yes, we were indeed. I'm afraid it's definitely beyond the scope of this community. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, it is. I think we. I think we just have to make the protest and and hope that Breckland turn it down again. We we we. Uh, yeah. If you feel that we've got the wording for the protest, then I think with thanks to everyone that we probably ought to move on because I'm conscious that we've managed an hour and a half so far. And we've got a little bit more to go, folks. Uh, and we, we're, we're also we're also losing members as the time ticks by. So 
Yeah, I, I mean, suggest that we, we leave that one where it is and we pass quickly over 0004 because that's just the notification. Do you want to, do you have to say anything on that one, Mark, or can we just move uh, it? Nothing really. It's purely for your information. This is a water pipe installation. They are not asking for your comments at this stage. So um, just so that you, you're aware that you can have a look at that application if you wish, but it's it's then not asking for comments. So, um, right. so we want to move on to 470 on the screen if we can. And that's um, at Nightingale Way. Yeah, Chris, we just need to uh, you just need to sort of unshare and then uh, reshare with the with the with the window. We're looking at one of your emails at the moment. Yeah. If we could um, get back to the uh, um, the uh, that document, and then we can you can see the Absolutely. Yeah, one hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, yeah, uh, super. So. Um, yeah, this is, uh, as it says, it's, it's a two story extension to the rear of uh, this uh, house on night at the end of right at the end of Nightingale Way in the cul de sac, um, 50 as it says there. So, um, the reason why you, you're looking at sort of three uh, drawings there and a photograph, the photograph is, is there because they're not going to change the front at all, um, but you can see on those three uh, elevation drawings what is proposed for uh, the rear of the house. If we could go to the next page, please, Chris. Thank you. So this is the you've got the ground floor um, of the extension uh, shown there. So as, as is very popular these days, a, a larger kitchen diner and a sort of utility room uh, sort of um, basically be added there. And uh, on the next page, um, if we see that, so upstairs they basically are adding another bedroom um uh to the house uh there so um yeah open for comments please um i'm not seeing any hands up at the moment um, <laughs> Mike, are there I, any I comments comment. um on, on on the last drawing and on these drawings it shows some windows coming out i mean is there anything about you know overlooking the neighbors and everything it can we was. just go back two pages please chris to the first page of this application but that's the one so uh, yeah if you look at uh, where the block plan is there on the left um yeah, yeah you can see uh, sort of where the house sort of faces um sort of the windows are sort of facing towards uh sort of dog leg back garden um so oh. the only people who might potentially uh, there is a uh south east elevation south west elevation so there is some um there's a door and a couple of little windows on the south uh west elevation um which is sort of kind of hard to see which <laughs> um yeah. which is sort of relevant really but there, there are there are some small windows definitely facing the immediate neighbors um, but the larger sort of French doors and the the sort of more substantial um, uh, second uh, sorry first floor uh, windows are sort of facing sort of quite the, the back garden and, and uh, sort of neighbours back garden fences so less close to them I'd say. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the window in the low level uh one is a high it's a high level window so it's not a full size window mm -hmm. on the on the ground floor the, the one facing to the side yeah yeah it's that, i mean what struck me actually was how was how few windows there are on the sides of the house but um yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's 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 quite hard to tell from that what impact it would definitely oh. have on the neighbors i must admit oh it looks like they're putting a new window in the existing one of the existing rooms as well. Oh yeah, because they're probably losing the window at the back, putting a new window at the side in bedroom three. Just says new window, which would be overlooking next door probably. It, it would be overlooking next door, but yeah. generally speaking, bedroom windows are little used, aren't they? People, most people don't sit at the bedroom window looking out no. and see what the neighbours are doing. I, I know you can do, but. And most spot. bedroom windows are you you can see the neck curtains rustle if you want to if you put any tape on that. Uh, we, we can we, we we can certainly point out that the neighbours might have something to say by, 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 
subject to neighbours. It sounds like a classic support subject to neighbours to me. Oh, yeah. right. There's a hands up from Jen Hollis. Uh, Jen? Yeah, I was going to. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I, I go with it. Subject to neighbours. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for that, Jen. I think we're getting towards a majority on that now. Agreed. Everyone agreed. Well, that's agreed. agreed. Okay. Well. Agreed. We, we, we agreed. Yeah. Okay, so we support okay. this. Super. Oh, there's a hands up from Mark Robinson. Is that Mark? Do you want to speak this comment? issue? Yeah, I did want to comment actually. Um, I'm not. I'm going to say it now. I'm not a fan of this support the neighbours comment because I don't think that stacks as a planning re reason. <laughs> but I'm supportive of the application because it has very minimal effect on the local amenity and the neighbours, and the and the overlooking. You get that in any residential area. It's about minim minimising that impact. And as, actually, I've, t I've taken the time to actually have a look at this site. The overlooking is not, to, you know, a mm. discernible issue. So I'm, I would remove the support sub, uh, subject to neighbours because that don't stack as a planning reason. Can I just come in and comment on what Mark said? I'd like to support what he said because I think um, regardless of whether we say subject to neighbours, uh, I think they're going to take in any comments from neighbours anyway. So it, it, it's probably not really worth us saying that, to be honest. <laughs> well, we've been saying it for years. On your I know, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel strongly it, either way. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the only the only purpose of it is is it you, it, because um, obviously comments come in from from ourselves, uh, neighbours, and other consultees at different times. Um, it, it does enable us you to uh, sort yeah. of uh, show that um, there may be sort of other reasons that need to be taken into yeah. account that you you can't possibly have been aware of at, at the time you made the comment. That that's the yeah. sort of. That's a good it point. Is, it, 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 it's, a, it's a get out clause for us to be honest. It is really. So the <laughs> no, can, I have have like that. <laughs> can, I, can I come back on that, please? Yes, please. I recognise those comments, and my counter argument that would be as a statutory consultee on plan applications, our consultational um, comments will carry more weight the more they are weighted towards planning consideration mm, yeah that's a good point yeah okay so our, um, we're moving towards just simply supporting this uh, are we happy to agree that we support it agreed 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 agreed, agreed. thank, thank you, very you. Much, everybody i think we're now saying we support it full stop right. we've got one more yep. to, we've got Noted. one more item on this on this uh on this number so we're we're on to h now which is uh three double seven and this is the little extra addition at um tesco's on norwich road yeah so it's the the tesco express um the small tesco store um it's a small uh sort of um not, not exactly lean to because it is a brick built uh single story uh small addition to the building which is right around the back of the shop uh, so not visible in that photo but you can see the red markings on the plan um could we have the next page please uh, chris um so this is what it would look like from the rear as i said you wouldn't you wouldn't really see it from the road at all unless you, you go around the back um the question was asked earlier what is a foster box um, oh yeah did that. The, the application form is, is sort of not very forthcoming on that and i have you know an insert so it didn't really sort of add a conclusive answer apart from it seems to be some kind of storage mm. uh facility area um so i i, I can't really be sure on that but uh, whatever it is you can't see it from the outside Stuart, right. oh, come in. Stuart. Yeah, I, th I think um, the foster probably refers to like foster home. So immediate at the moment, I think everything's offloaded into trolleys and you often see them sitting out at the back there until they're unloaded and put into the appropriate places. This is probably a where they're going to put them in so they're out of the way and then pack them into the various places in inside the store. Mm-hmm. 
Does anyone have any reason for objecting to this development? It's, it's a small, small area at the back. It won't be seen from the road. Uh, I don't suppose most people will ever be aware of it. Can, can we say that we support it? Agreed. Is that, is that hands up from Mark Robinson from the last item still or still? Okay. Oh, yeah, so he's just written support. So um, it sounds like um, uh, unanimous support for that again, then, is it? Um, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very, right. Thank you very much indeed. Um, okay, so with that completes item 31. We move on to 32, which is late planning applications. Mark, are there any? You'll be delighted to hear no. Oh. <laughs> item 33. I, rush on, rush on. Item 33, <laughs> decisions of variance. Are there any decisions of variance that we need to cover, Mark? Oh, well, again, hopefully you can still see Chris's screen. So there's just the two items that I was going to mention there, which is yes, uh, 1497, 99, which you've already uh, mentioned. Yep. I think everyone's well aware of. Yep. Another one that's worth mentioning is just uh, application 0250, the eco house on uh, Nether Row, which is sort of to the rear of the houses there, has actually been withdrawn. Um, the town council was in support of that, I think, subject to neighbours, although <laughs> <laughs> that is. But um, th that that was worth mentioning and i think uh, as terry has has now left us perhaps you would like to mention the premier inn situation at this point as well uh yes i think that's appropriate um terry sent an email to me today i think it was hoping he was hoping you probably could speak to this uh but um the situation at the premier inn on brandon road is that Breckland turned down the last application to develop more buildings on the car park which would have given them more bedrooms and fewer car parking spaces and might have made there for the people would be parking on Main Street. That was turned down by Breckland and uh, the owners of Premier Inns appealed to the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State's inspector's report came today and to put it bluntly he has turned down their application. So as of now uh, Whitbread do not have permission to make that development on the uh, on the Warrener site. I think most people might regard that as good Pleased news. Pleased to hear it's that. that what we said ourselves. So um, watch this space. It may be that uh, in the fullness of time they'll come back with a reduced proposal, but for the moment that's been headed off. Good. Mm. So good. now if we can move on to 34. This is a, the item is, is one that we put on regularly to remind ourselves that we have the right to do this. So this is items to be referred to the Greater Setford Partnership. I was hoping that either um, uh, Jane or Terry would be here to, to, to take forward the, the comments we made in the last meeting in March. However, they are not. Is there anyone else who, who is able to comment on uh, what we wanted then to know about the £75,000 or is there any further comment that that we'd like to, ref any, any further suggestion that we'd like to refer to the Greater Setford Partnership? Any chance, any colleagues, this is your chance to speak about the Greater Setford Partnership, either updating us on the past or are there any new, up new, new proposals we should put to them? Brenda Cannon. Brenda? <laughs> yeah. What well, well, Mark's here, I don't know if he, I don't even know if they've met, but Mark's here, so he might know something. Yeah, the other thing was, um, earlier we spoke about all these poles going up. Well, yep. being a great effective development partnership takes on, you know, NHS, everything mm -hmm. else. Cannot, cannot that be put to the effective development partnership to look into that, about making these companies work together? It's a bold suggestion. Well, <laughs> you, you know, I thought that's yeah. what I had them there for. I think it's a good idea, personally. But how do we tackle it? Otherwise, we're just going to sit back and do nothing as a town council. Actually, we've asked you to, can you look into it? If it can't be done, it can't be done. But at least we've put a proposal on the table. It's very, very straightforward, very, very simple. Are there any, uh, can I put it the other way around? Are there any objections to what Brenda suggested? No, no, there no. Aren't. good idea. Can we, do that? can we do that, please, Mark Webster? Can we put that, uh, we simply send that to the Greater Setford Partnership and say, will they please investigate the possibility of, of reducing the number of masks required by, require, by, by obliging the businesses to work together better? 
Yep. So does that go basically via um, councillors Jeremy and James then, basically? Uh, to, I think so, yes. Mike? Yes, Mike? Listening. Yes. You've forgotten that, that we have two town reps and I'm the other rep, so perhaps you might oh. want to include me in that, Luke. <laughs> uh, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm very happy for you to join in at this stage if you'd like to. What What would you... Would, no, you well, Mike, I've just stated I'm the other town rep on the Great Effect for Partnership. Kerry's okay. Brooklyn, Kerry's Brooklyn. Yeah, that's right. So it should be Jane James and uh, the Jane mayor. And Mark, yeah. yeah. Mark. Mark, 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 would you like to comment on either of these things? I uh, that is, <clears throat> do you have any comment to make about the the the, the March minutes, or, or do you have any comment to make about the one proposal that's been put forward by Brenda, or do you have a, a, any other comment to make, please? Mike, I, I wouldn't like to make any comment about you, the March you, you, you minutes. I'm getting you older. Mark, Mike, yes. thank you for interrupting, but I will, you know, just get there. Um, <laughs> if I if I could recall the March uh, meeting, I could quite give you an update. But it seems that that seems an age away. But um, if you just um, Mark Webb. Um, Webster to email myself and Jane. Um, I am catching up with Jack Weaver, who's the new Great Effect for Partnership Manager, and I will flag that with Jack. The issue of, of you know of trying to get our um, telecommunications companies to work a, a lot more co cohesively. Thank you, Mark. So uh, I look forward to receiving that email, Mark. Yeah, will do. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that, Mark and Mark. Um, Dave Hodgkinson, can I just make a comment, please? Yes, Dave. Yeah, I just, um, I, I know it's been difficult times, and uh, no doubt the um, Greater Development uh, Setford Partnership has uh, had difficult times as well, and, and not a great time for the new um, uh, project manager or whatever he's called to uh, to to come into post. Um, but I just wondered if we could have a general update at some time. I'm not asking for it now, Mark, um, but uh, just. Uh, especially in view of the fact that I think was it was it about now that we should have had a public meet, uh, meeting. Um, I so think it's quite correct, nice Dave. to have a little bit of an update of what activity or the fact that there hasn't been any activity, which may be the case in due of the Dave, uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, Mark. I, I'll just come back on that, and that's a really good point. I know Jack actually came into position four days after the, we, we went into Very effectively different. lockdown. Mm -hmm. And he's like a lot of, uh, I know Breckland, um, 50 staff moved over to supporting the community hub. And that's where Jack's been working, uh, supporting Stefan with right. the community response. So I don't think too much has happened on the Great Effect of the Development uh, <laughs> Partnership to date. Yeah. I'm just we're now just at the beginning, you know, re engaging. And interesting enough, I'm catching up with Jack tomorrow. So um I take well, your point on board yeah, and I'll raise that. that. That's, that, that's um, it, well I mean uh, it's very understandable that, that could that would have happened that way, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Some time ago I put my hands up and I haven't been called. I just oh. mentioned D Dennis, you're you're happy. To, uh, uh, Dennis, we're in a. We're, I have a problem. I can't see the hands. Can you, yeah, can, I can, are, you, are you happy to speak now, Dennis? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've got so much to say now, so you you're lucky on that. One. <laughs> uh, because Dave Dave took most of what I was going to say away. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that. I, I've never. No, it's fine. I've never been uh, as a greater supporter of Greater Thetford Partnership since they've become so secretive and hiding everything from us. It would be nice to have an update, and I'm sure Mark or Jane or both will give us an update soon. There may not be too much to update us on, but it'd be nice to have that follow-on update. Um, are they going to set up any kind of uh, something on the uh, computers to say, you know, this is what we've been doing, and, and maybe just a... a uh, um, uh, to show us some pictures and a few wordings about what's been happening. Okay. <laughs> I, 
I, I think I think Mark Mark Robinson's offered to take that forward, um, but obviously mm -hmm. uh, he didn't have notice of the question, so uh, <laughs> that's going for the future, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not saying now, but I think um, uh, unfortunately we haven't had be able to have the uh, six monthly uh, update that the public is allowed to um, see, and so I would like to have as much information on what, if anything, they've managed to keep move forward in these very hard times. And so I'll, I shall patiently wait with Mark. I know Mark will, will get something forward. So thank you. I think, I think um, uh, Marcus is hearing that and Jane has tried in the past to keep us better informed than perhaps we were once upon a time. So hopefully mm -hmm. we're moving in the right direction. Um, anything else from Mark Robinson about that? Otherwise, I'm proposing to move on. Stuart, uh, Stuart I'd like to speak. Sorry, Stuart. Again, I'm sorry. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the hands. No. Can, can, Mark, sorry. I, can I can I take Stuart then come back to you if you wish to? So Stuart, next, please. Thanks, Mike. Um, it'd be sorry. I wasn't at the March meeting, and I don't think too much was gleaned from what the seventy-five thousand brand building. Um, was going to be. I don't know if Mark's in a position he can give us a little bit more guidance what that is in relation to. Um, I wonder if it was just staff costs or whether we're doing brochures or whether we're doing whatever. And the second point is, as we'll have seen, my letter to Sam um, Chapman Allen as chair of Great Effect Partnership regarding the green infrastructure. And I uh, do think this is something where we have not delivered over the last 15 years. And uh, and I think you know money's going to be tight, and I can't really see this getting any more. But where we go on backwards, mm -hmm. uh, I think we do need to have a look at that. We do need to sell these houses, so to have something that has connectivity to our green outside, but it's also within the town. We do need to provide better cycling and walking within the town, and it doesn't necessarily have to cost that much. There are certain little bits and pieces rather than this least cost mentality that we have with our officers um, that are holding the purse strings, sometimes the, if these can be built into have a bit more positive and holistic opinion. If we want to get people to walk and cycle, we do need to improve the drop curves, the, the, the um, slipways to these um, pathways and cycleways. And at the moment, I don't see the, the impetus coming forward from that uh, great debt partnership. So it'd be great to see Jack giving something to, do, to have a look at on that respect and how we can facilitate. But it's also getting a mind change with our officers from Breckland and Norfolk to, to facilitate that. Do you, do you think it would help, uh, Stuart, if uh, this was made an agenda item at some future date, either the next meeting or the one after, perhaps, so that we can give it rather more thought? Well, I'd and, like uh, on May I mean, to... We've, we've, we, come to, we've, it's, we've come to it nearly two hours into the meeting. I, I feel at the moment we're probably going to brush it, not brush it under the carpet, but we're not going to give it a long discussion. You've made the point. If I can just ask yeah, that please. Yep. we ask our members to take it forward to Great Effective Partnership and discuss it, please. Uh, uh, Mark Robinson, are you happy with that? Thank you, Mike. Um, I think I answered Dennis's um, concerns in my response to Dave. Mm -hmm. um, most things have been put on hold mm -hmm. as we responded to the um, the COVID nineteen situation, yep. Yep. and Great Effect for Partnership is one of those things. Um, we were just going into a a, um, a tendering process regarding the seventy five thousand pound branding piece, and that is in a state of hiatus at the moment um and i've seen stuart's email i think stuart's you know quite right in the, his direction of travel no pun intended there <laughs> in in uh, and i apologize for the, the poor humor that was there um stuart's quite right though in a direction he's he's focusing upon um because the environment's going to be a bigger bigger um matter for us going forward and, and and as a planning matter actually so um i know mark's going to be sending an email i would do my best to remember all these points tomorrow morning when i have my catch up with jack um but by all means email both myself and jane and terry because you know 
although Terry's on there as a Breckland rep, we are all town councillors fighting mm-hmm. for the same thing. No, you're not. So, you know, I would ask that you keep all three of us in the loop and just keep banging away at us. Right. Thank you very much for that, Mark. I'm, I know you were put on the spot to a degree there. Um, I think um, the, the wider point that uh, Stuart was seeking to make about the green infrastructure is not going to go away. And I think we do need to consider whether it would be helpful if we had some perhaps more specific proposals, Stuart, right, that we could that we could um, uh, submit rather than just saying, please get on with it. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it down to the town council to be saying, this is what we'd like to see in the next few years uh, in the terms of green infrastructure? Should we be spending some time thinking that through? Happy to um, put that as an agenda item and take that forward next week. Uh, I'm yeah. grateful. I'd be really grateful. Uh, hands up from uh, Dave Hodgson. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, is it OK, Mike, to go ahead? Yeah. Um, I just received an email from a member of the public who tried to ask a question via the live chat. has been watching the um, this meeting on, the, uh, on YouTube. Um, yeah. I don't think we we didn't really leave a section for that at the beginning, but uh, so we might need, might need to think about how we're going to do that. Um, and his question was, read this item. Um, I only just looked at it, so I'm just in time. Um, I would like to know why the GTP website is still showing under construction after nearly 12 months. Under lockdown, shouldn't they be using this to communicate with the public? Please, could you bring this up at the next planning meeting? So I'll just put that out there as a question and um, perhaps we can have some response to it. I mean, if there's no response to it now, uh, then perhaps some response to it at our next meeting. Uh, the, the only person able to respond to that is, is Mark and uh, Mark Robinson, and he may feel that he would like to give either a written response or to have some time to find an appropriate response. I think we're yeah. grateful for the question. I, I can is understand that. Yeah, so I think we have to be fair to Mark and say, um, yeah, uh, if, if you wish to reply at, at, a, at a later date, then that's your right. Mike, carry on. As you could, as you could probably appreciate, web design is not my strength. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not having the website in front of me, um, I, I, I would like to investigate. That is probably the best thing I could do at this stage is investigate okay. that for you and come back with a response. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thank the member of the public. I thank Mark for your response. And I'm going to suggest that we uh, leave that item now. And if everyone's agreeable, can we look briefly at 35, bringing in Mark Webster again? This is to review the corporate plan, which we have got a copy of somewhere attached. Mark, yeah. Mark can I just say something? Yes, um, that, that Dave brought up that um, at the beginning of our agenda, we normally yes. have people that want to address the meeting because it's planning. So as, uh, as Mark Webster can add that to the agenda each time. Well, that's not necessarily true. They, it's only if they've got something to talk about uh, and they would have to notify the chair earlier, I think. You're mixing up a little bit with uh, full council. We need a way that they can come in, don't we? Uh, what, what we've done in the past is that we've asked people to, uh, if you yeah. remember, recently, we have, we, fairly recently we had two members of the public attend the meeting uh, and they wanted to talk about street names. And they had approached me, in a, the, the then chairman, shall we say, in advance, and I'd arranged that that, that, that that they should, that they had asked me about street names, I'd said the way forward is to go to the planning committee, I will facilitate that. So that's what we did. It would be, it, it would be very helpful if people could approach uh, the, the if, if it's easy, just through, through the town council, so through, go to the town clerk and say, this is an issue we think planning should be talking about, or I've got a question for planning. That way you get an answer at the meeting. If you ask a question at the meeting, you're probably going to have wait another month for the answer. Yeah. Well, I know at planning, if the planning application is coming in and they are objecting to it, they come to the meeting, don't they? I mean, we don't get that many, but... Chair, Chairman, it's uh, Chris Trimmon here. Uh, we've had two hours now, so you'd normally have to ask if we can uh, suspend standing orders. Uh, th- thank you, Mr. Timekeeper. 
Um, I'd like to ask colleagues if you're willing to suspend standing orders because we have completed two hours. Uh, are you are you happy to carry on? I, I I'd like to carry on, please. <laughs> Favour, yes. Okay. Yeah, go on. And I'd like to make a comment on what Brenda said as well. So Yes, uh, well, I, I, I think we've got a, 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 an overwhelming majority wishing to carry on. And if you'd like to make that comment on what Brenda said now, please. Yeah, well, I'd just like to support, well, I mean, I know Brenda in a way was supporting me, but I'd like to reiterate that I think it's a good idea that we should. I mean, I, I appreciate what you said, Mike, about uh, members of the public would, would get a better response if they um, put, put their questions in advance. Um, and we need to make that clear uh, to members of the public. In, in this new situation where we're in the virtual situation, uh, in the past, people could have just turned up and made known at the beginning of the meeting that they wanted to say something, and that was generally accommodated. So I would like to think that we would have uh, something on the agenda to, uh, to facilitate that in the virtual setting so that people could... Uh, raise things at the beginning of the meeting. Um, There's no so, reason why we can't have an agenda item that allows allows members of the public to put yeah. questions. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm supporting, I think that's what Brent was asking for, and I would support that. Right. I, I suspect that I it's something that that probably the full... Is it, is it something that the full council should make a decision on? Question mark? I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Mm. It, 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 um, it's... it's I think the full council will be entitled to, to give me a slap risk if I say, and I will say anyway, uh, we'll put this on as an agenda item next time to allow members of the public to ask questions or, uh, I think probably it's largely asking questions, isn't it? Um, in the course of the meeting, at, at the agenda item, whatever it is, and we will either answer them or provide an answer later. Is that acceptable to everybody? You're here. Yes. Okay. Is that uh, your recommendation, do you think, Chair? Yeah. Hmm. I think, if, I think if, we need to look at standing orders to see whether the commit yeah. some committees are open, some are not. Some you well, have started to talk. That, Where we're standing. Yeah. Can I can I just make a comment that I, I think it's um, generally acceptable for councillors to ask for something to be added to an agenda before a meeting. So if one mm -hmm. of us is doing that, then I can't see that that's a problem. And I think well, we have there is a leaflet about public participation that we've given out on, from time to time, uh, which outlines our position. And I think our position. Is in the leaflet is probably more generous than we make provision for in our meetings. Well, can I suggest in that case that what we do is we, we put this, we, we ask for the next council meeting at the end of this month whether this is acceptable to them and that would, that would give us a decision before yeah. our next meeting. Yeah. So we could um, we could have the agreement of the full council or not as a case <laughs> may be, but I, I think they will agree. Uh, that, that members of the public should be commented in this way. I think the other okay. thing that I could say is that uh, it's often been said that this uh, planning meeting is a full council meeting. Now, I'm not sure what that means, whether it means that it's open to all, all the councillors or whether it has the same status as a full council meeting, in which case the full council meeting does have that provision as an agenda item at the beginning of it. So. Well, I'm, I'm going to suggest that we uh, uh, that we we put this as an agenda item in the next um, meeting of our committee, the next planning committee, on the grounds that we have the, the um, as you say, being the committee of the full council, we have the right to do that. And if it's challenged, then I'll take it on uh, in the next or on the okay. what's it. Would that, would that, yeah, would that be for uh, written written um, questions beforehand? I don't know whether that that suits. I think written questions before on the better because they'll get an answer. But if people want to ask questions during the meeting. That would be something we'll try and try and find a way around that in the item. So, uh, sh should we give that some thought and yeah. come back to? It? But we'll we'll try and have an answer ready for the next meeting. Okay. Hands up, Jen Hollis. Okay. Yeah, I was just um. Even though the, the planning committee is open to all councillors, 
because of our wards and if there's something in our wards we all need to be there to discuss it um normally it's, we only have people ask come in and if it's a specific question like you've said mike on the street names yes and at this time it's got they've got to be written questions anyway on the thing so maybe if they could submit them a, a, sort of three working days beforehand and then at least that cat the councillors will be able to reply on that day instead of them getting um hanging about yes it's already submitted you've got the answer and and then it saves people um hanging about for answers yeah. uh, i'm in your hands colleagues is, that, is, is what has just been acceptable to everybody is that the right way forward yeah, well, um, I know in the past people have just turned up just for one planning application. And what they want to try and get get across to us is their opposition to it. So, you know, we're sitting there listening to them. We don't live next door to where, whatever's happening. So, basically, we listen to them. So, it could be that they, they say, can I speak on I am planning application? If, if, so if, so some, so. If, if somebody wants to come to talk about a planning application, what we could do is... is it that they would contact the council in advance, ask for that to be done, uh, and then what we can do there as a result of which we can bring that item further forward up the agenda so the member of the public comes at seven o'clock and gets dealt with the, the, option, the item they want to hear is dealt with at ten past or whatever, rather than keeping one for an hour or even if it might say two hours until they get to the agenda item. Speak about a particular planning application, although it happens very rarely. But there's no reason why it shouldn't happen more often, if that's what people want, particularly during the present difficulties. So, um, with that, if we can try and um, uh, give this some thought for the next meeting, we can come up here and. <laughs> Who's got a lot of interference? No, it's done. Yeah, it does sound like there's a radio or TV on the, in the background that everyone would like to just check their microphones and sort of uh, mute when they're when they're not needed. That would be that would be handy. It's not me. I've been relegated to the kitchen. My internet's <laughs> off at home, so I've had to go around my son's and pinch his internet. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, okay, uh, we we'll. Are we ready to move on then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what? Just to say, I will clarify about the uh, whether we can, you know, uh, how the live chat on YouTube um, does get to us, whether we can, you know, better get that in future. Um, so I'll sort of just see if we can make sure that that you know, people do have a chance to interact if they if they think they are interacting that it does get through to us. So obviously, we are yeah. learning about how all this new stuff works. Yeah. I'm conscious that whilst Apologies. we're working at, um, uh, at the present time, we're working uh, virtually, and it, it, we we don't want to get the system too complicated. Otherwise, we're just going to we're just going to confuse ourselves, and we're going to have technical problems. I think we're looking at 3520, the corporate plan to review. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so um, just to uh, sort of, I suppose, give you the background that this has already been agreed. This is the, uh, the January meeting of this committee yeah. um, that the the previous three aims and objections uh, for the corporate plan, which are at the top of your screen there, if you can all see that, uh, we, we, there would be one added to them. So the, the second set of aims and actions, one, two, three and four, are as they currently stand. Um, mm -hmm. As this has already been agreed by this committee, there's, there's probably no need to discuss this further. Um, um, is, is, uh, I suppose that's just to to note that, and that will be going forward unless there are sort of any objections to that. Basically, uh, I think that's right. What we what we're doing is reminding ourselves that we've got four items to work on, and we should be we shouldn't be ignoring them every meeting and leaving until the end. We need to at the end of the year we need to be bearing in mind what we're aiming for and what actions are needed. Uh, unless there's any specific comments, I'd like to move on to the next item, uh, which is 3720. But just pause for a moment in case. No, oh, I think I've paused for a moment. So we're now on um, planning policy guidance. That's 3620, sorry. Um, and this is uh, something that we 
perhaps just need to consider, is there an effective way of reviewing our planning policy guidance? Uh, it's been suggested that we should invite a working group or a subcommittee of perhaps two or three um, supported by our officer to go through this and look for possible improvements. And as you can see, some have been highlighted here. Um, I don't know how many of you read this document and how many and whether anyone wants to comment about that now. If there isn't, then can I suggest that we do need to do this? We would probably be better working with a small group. And are there therefore any volunteers who would be willing to give up some time to meet uh, for virtually, of course, at the moment, uh, to look at this and to suggest improvements, changes or whatever? Any comments, please? Any volunteers, please? I'll volunteer, uh, Mr Chair. Uh, Jenny, I think that's you. Yeah. It is. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'd like to volunteer for that one, please. Your, your, sure, right. Your, uh, that was Jenny first. Was there a second person? Stuart. Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. So, Jenny and Stuart, can I suggest that? <coughs> Brenda if, if Cannon. Brenda Cannon. Okay. I, I don't think we want more. So, if we take for Jenny and Stuart and Brenda, um, uh, um, are you happy to work without the chair or do you want a chair? You, you'd certainly have Mark to work with. I'm Thank quite happy not to be involved. I'm, I'm really conscious of trying to keep it a small number. We've got three volunteers. Um, can I suggest that you three uh, with, uh, arrange with Mark how you're going to organise it and whether you want a chair or a, or a leader or whatever? Um, I'm happy to leave you four people to do it. If you want me in, that's fine, but I'm not volunteering particularly. I think four is plenty, including the officer. Is everyone happy with that? With it? That's uh, about, about, about nearly half of the remaining have now got involved. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I can, if I can yeah. say thank you to the three volunteers. Um, and, and, uh, and suggest that perhaps Mark, as you're the uh, you're the officer, you might like to um, arrange dates or make other arrangements with the three volunteers. Yeah, it will do. Yeah. Okay. I know it's normal for chairs to be involved, but I just don't think it's it's necessary this time. We've got the uh, vice chairman anyway, and two experienced committee members, so I'm happy to leave it to you. Okay, so on to 37. Um, uh, if uh, just we're not going to discuss that now. So on to 37, uh, committee officers update. Uh, uh, no further. Add? Nothing further, Chair. Thank you very much. And 38, any community engagement? Do we wish to um, uh, agree any consultation or media release? Any uh, suggestions? Again, nothing from no? me. Nothing. No. 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 Colleagues, I think it remains for me to say thank you very much for your considerable uh, um, tenacity in sticking at this. I think we've made a made a good meeting in very difficult circumstances. Thanks very much to the officers. Thanks to everyone. Meeting closed. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, Mike. That was good. Yeah, thanks very much, Chris. That went. Um, I think. <laughs> I think we can safely say it went better than the rehearsal. If, if, <laughs> we, if we can't Monday's the rehearsal.